I'm Dr. Ken Lacovera. I'm a paleontologist at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Paleontology is a very young science, uh, less than 200 years old. And so we have so much yet to know about the ancient world. We're really just at the very beginning of this exploration. The Jurassic Park movies have done a lot for paleontology. And there's a whole generation of paleontologists, the one uh, that's younger than me, uh, that has many members that are paleontologists because of the Jurassic Park movies. So, you know, finding dinosaurs isn't just about being lucky. Paleontology does a lot for humanity. Uh, for one thing, you know, we're all really concerned with climate change right now. So if you want to know how the Earth and the biosphere in particular responds to climate change, well, those data are in the ancient record. So, you know, the, the further ahead you want to look, the further back uh, in time you have to investigate. And the energy that we need as well to, to drive our planet right now, uh, we find that using fossils. Dreadnoughtus is an amazing plant-eating dinosaur that I discovered in South America in 2005. It was 85 feet long from snout to tail, about two stories at the shoulders. There are a lot of challenges when you're a 65-ton creature. You think it's an amazing uh, benefit, right? Because there's nothing that's going to prey on you less the name Dreadnoughtus, and that's probably true. But how do you nourish that great body? Um, how do you ambulate? We're just starting to learn about how these creatures walk. How do they balance? It might be a two second trip uh, if Dreadnought steps on a rock before the brain finds out and then can signal the muscles to react to that. How do they regulate their body temperature? If you scaled an elephant up to 65 tons, that animal would literally cook inside its body. The flesh would cook. Uh, big animals like Dreadnoughtus have ways of dealing uh, with those physiological challenges. Another thing to think about, if you're 65 tons, can you kneel down? And if you can't kneel down, well then a female Dreadnoughtus is pushing an egg out of a two-story window. So how does that work? Every time I find a fossil, I'm just amazed that it happens. And when you think about it, so a dinosaur dies, it's entombed in sediment, and all the while it sits there, history is unfolding above it. And those mammals, they survive the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous, and they evolve into whales and giraffes and other things. And some of them evolve into great apes. Some of those great apes evolve into our species, and that species then invents painting and metallurgy and eventually science. And then some of those great apes go on to become paleontologists. The bones and the paleontologists, those highly evolved great apes, they have to meet on the surface of the earth within about 100 years after 65 million years, or they never see each other. It's kind of mind blowing that it ever happens at all. But the earth is old and, you know, very, very improbable events over long periods of time become probable. 